Hi Hopscotchers! Today we're going to make Flabby Bird. I'm making the game on my iPhone, which looks a little different than on an iPad, but the rules are still the same. And remember, you can always pause and rewind this video if you get stuck or confused. Let's get to it! So first, let's pick our character, which you can do by tapping the gray plus button at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to scroll to the right until we find Bird. But you can pick whatever character you want. Now Bird has three rules. The first is, if nothing happens, Bird falls down because of gravity. The second is, when you tap your iPad or iPhone, she'll flap up. And the third, when she bumps into the pipes, she'll disappear and the game will end. So first, let's make the falling rule. Tap Bird, and if we drag her to the left, we'll see a white bubble that says plus add code. Tap that, and here we see the magenta Wens menu. We want to select Game Starts. And the first thing we're going to do is create an ability or custom block. Abilities group blocks of code together so you can reuse them elsewhere. So from our custom tab, find new block to the right, and let's name it Fall. Great. Now Fall appears in our custom tab as a new ability. So select that and we're going to use it to make Bird fall all the time. To do that, we need to go to the blue control flow tab at the bottom right of the screen and we want to select a repeat forever block to make a loop. And to fall, we need to use a change Y by block which moves things up or down. So go to the red movement tab at the bottom left and select a change Y by block. Now, if all we did is type a single number here, Bird would move up and down at a constant speed, and it really wouldn't look good or feel like Flappy Bird at all. What we want to do instead is for her to fall faster and faster as she's going unless she's jumping. And the way we do that is by changing the speed of her fall as she's going down. So to put a number in your code that you can change later, we use values. If you tap the iPad icon at the center bottom of your screen, you'll see values. We're going to create a new value, so scroll to the right, tap new value, and let's call this bird up down. Perfect. So this value is going to be the change in bird's height, and what that means is that if it were 5, bird would move up a little. If it were negative 20, she would move down a lot, and if it were 0, she would stay exactly where she was. So let's tap bird up down in our values menu. Now in order to make bird fall faster and faster as she's falling, we need to make this value a bigger negative number every time this forever loop runs. So go to the yellow values tab at the bottom of your screen and tap on increase value. In the first bubble, pick bird up down, and in the second, type in negative four. Great. So now at first bird is going to fall at zero the first time the code runs, then she's going to fall negative four, then negative eight, and then negative 12 because every time the code runs, bird is subtracting four. And this is going to make it look like she's falling faster and faster before she splats onto the ground. And this is exactly what it looks like in Flappy Bird when the bird is falling towards the ground and it's what we look like when we fall. So this looks a lot more realistic than if she were just falling at a constant speed. All right, let's check it out. Tap on the turquoise play button, and perfect. Little do you know, you just made a physics engine. A physics engine is a common set of rules that the objects in your game follow to make your game look more like real life. Let's go back to edit by tapping the gray pen at the top right of the screen. And we're going to make bird speed a little faster. First things first, let's make sure you're adding code to bird by looking at what's at the top of this blue box. Is it bird? Perfect. Now tap in between the fall block and the blue repeat forever block. And we're going to add set speed. Go to your red movement tab at the bottom left and scroll to the right and select set speed. And let's type in 1000 for this. There we go. And finally, let's get her to turn a little bit as she's falling. Scroll back down and tap underneath the yellow increase value block. So we're back inside repeat forever and go back to the red movement tab, select turn 
and we're going to turn bird by negative one degrees. Awesome. Let's test it. Perfect. Bird is a little dizzy and may be hitting a few brushes as she's falling, but looks good. So now go back to edit by tapping on the gray pen and let's add our second rule. In this rule, when we tap the iPad, Bird is going to flap up. So if we scroll down, tap on plus new when, let's pick is tapped from the when's menu. And again, we're going to make an ability because that makes our work much easier. So under the custom tab, scroll to the right and select new block. There we go. And let's name this flap. Perfect. And now we can select our flap block and whatever we put here will happen when we tap the iPad and we want bird to jump, right? So remember bird up down, all we have to do is change that. So go to the yellow values tab and find set value. Pick bird up down for your first bubble and then type 20 for the second bubble. And the reason we're doing this is because if you remember our first rule, bird is constantly falling. She's falling towards the ground so fast. So what this flap ability is going to do is tell your program that every time you tap the iPad, you're going to override that and reset bird speed to 20 going up. So let's check it out. Tap, tap, she's up and up. The thing is, she's still turning though. And now she's kind of going upside down, which is probably not an ideal way for her to be flying. So we're going to add one more block. Go back into edit and in your red movement tab, scroll to the right and select set angle. And we're going to set it to zero so she's standing upright. There we go. And great, that looks awesome. So the next thing we need to do is start on our third rule, which is adding the obstacle. We all know in Flappy Bird, Bird is flying along and some terrifying pipes come her way and your job is to keep her floating through them. So now let's add a new object to add in our pipes. Let's go back to edit mode, X out of here, then tap the gray plus button at the bottom of the screen. And we want a text object, so scroll to your left and let's call this pipes. Okay. And let's be sure to rename our object pipes too by tapping the bolded text below it and typing pipes. This will make it easier to identify our objects when we're adding code. And with that, we're going to add a new rule to pipes. So tap plus add code. And we want the pipes to come immediately when the game starts so you can choose game starts. Now go to the green looks and sounds tab at the bottom left of your screen and find set text. And in order to make this text object look like pipes, we're going to use emojis. So tap on the globe or smiley face button. And we're going to scroll all the way to the right until we find the green square buttons with the white X. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to explain how to do this on my iPhone. But if you're using an iPad, you'll want to adjust the numbers here. So tap one green square in tap two more. So now we have a row of three and if you're on an iPad make this a row of four and then tap the space bar five times. And if a period shows up don't worry about it just go back and delete it and make sure we have all five spaces. Four, five, then go back to emojis tap in three more green squares, or if you're on an iPad, tap in four. And the next thing we wanna do is make our green squares or pipes stand up straight so that a bird can actually go weaving through them. If we test our code, our pipes are lying flat parallel to the bottom of the screen, so they're kind of useless. So go to the red movement tab and select a set angle block on the right. And we're going to set it to 90 degrees which is exactly perpendicular to the bottom of the screen. Cool, let's try it out again. 
Okay, so that looks good, but I think this game is going to be a little tricky because bird is 100 times bigger than the pipes. So let's add code to make them a little bit bigger. Go back to edit and from the green looks and sounds menu, select a set size block. And let's set it to 200. If you're on an iPad, make this 350. Now let's see what this looks like. Cool, that looks a lot better. So now let's get the pipes to start on the right and move across the screen to the left. Take a look now at the finished game. Think about all of the steps the pipes are taking to look like this. What do they do first? Where do they start? Then what do they do? See if you can apply these steps to actually writing the code. Try writing them down on a piece of paper and then think about how you'll translate them into hopscotch code. This process, by the way, is called reverse engineering, which sounds fancy, but all it means is working backwards from the finished product in order to figure out the solution. Cool, so let's go back to edit, tap on C code, and let's actually start writing our hopscotch code now. For our pipes, go to the red movement tab and we're going to select a set position block. And for the X value, let's think about it. We want the pipes to start at the very right of the screen, which is X equals 1000. And for their height, which is Y, we may not know exactly where we want them to start because that's what makes the game really fun. So instead, we're going to pick random, which is a purple math operator we can find by scrolling right. Cool. And for the first bubble, type in 200. And for the second bubble, type in 600. Great. So now we want to make sure that the pipes actually move left across the screen. And the way we do that is with the red change X by block. So go to the red movement tab and select change X by. And we want to type in negative 1000 because negative numbers in the X value move left. Finally, we don't want the pipes to just do this once. So we're going to do a little trick that makes it look like we have a bunch of pipes moving across the screen. We're going to use the same pipes and have them repeatedly do the same right to left motion. In order to do that, we're going to use a repeat forever block, which is in the blue control flow tab. So find and select repeat forever, then really carefully drag everything else inside of it in the exact order you had it written. So scroll up and let's move all of our blocks directly inside. Then once you're done, take a second, pause, and make sure your code looks like mine. And let's check it out. So this looks good, but our pipes are moving too fast for us to play the game, at least on our iPad. So let's go back to edit and add another rule. Above the green set text block, tap above that, so we're still inside repeat forever. Then go to the red movement tab at the bottom left and select set speed. And by default, speed is 400 in hopscotch and we want to have that. So let's type in 200. Okay, and let's test it out. So tap play and great. This is a lot easier for us, but there's another problem, which is bird is actually going through the pipes regardless of whether she's going through the opening or not. So we need to fix that. The trick to do this is to make it look like bird disappears when she hits the pipes. So back in edit mode, scroll up to bird's code and tap plus new when. And here we want to select bumps. So scroll to the right and this is a collision. And the two things that are going to bump into each other are the bird. So tap that for the first anything bubble. And in the second, select pipes. So now we have a rule for when bird bumps the pipes, but with nothing in it. What we want to happen here is when bird bumps the pipes, she should turn invisible. So go to the green looks and sounds tab and select set invisibility. We're going to set it to 100 or 100% 100 invisible. So let's play that now. Okay, so we lost. 
And now you can kind of tell that we lost, but there really isn't anything reminding us of that, except we have no more bird. So one really easy way to do that is to add a score. So go back to edit, X out of here, and let's add a new text object. And in this case, we can leave our text object blank. And so we can just press check and we're going to drag it to the bottom left corner of the screen. And let's rename our text object score. Perfect. And we want our text object to immediately start tracking the score. So let's tap plus add code. And game starts in the magenta ones menu. Now go to the green looks and sounds tab and pick a set text block. And what we're going to do is display the score as you're playing. So here in set text, instead of tapping the keyboard, tap the three gray bars above Q. Then find the iPad icon at the bottom of your screen and add a new value by scrolling to the right and selecting new value. And let's call it score. Okay. And finally, let's select score from the values menu. And so the way this is set right now is we only show the score once and if it changes, nothing will change in our scorekeeper. So we're going to use a repeat forever loop from the blue control flow tab. Okay, then let's drag our green set text block inside of it. Now this object will always show the most updated score. For the score to actually mean anything though, we need to change it depending on what happens with bird. So we're going to add a new rule to score. So tap plus new when and we're going to select a bumps from collisions again. Scroll to the right. So when the pipes bump the edge of the screen, our score will increase. Tap the first anything bubble and pick pipes. Then for the second anything bubble, scroll to the right and pick edge with the iPad icon. Now go down to the yellow values tab and select an increase value block. Okay, and we want to pick score for the first bubble. And then in the second bubble, type in one. Let's press check and see if that works. There we go. Well, that kind of works because the score goes up when the pipes hit the edge of the screen, but we lost and our score is still going up. We only want the score to increase if we can still see bird. So let's go back to edit and find the blue control flow tab. And we want to select a check once if block. We're going to check once if bird's invisibility equals zero. So tap equals in the conditionals tab. And in the first bubble, we're going to tap bird at the bottom center of our screen and pick invisibility as a percentage. So scroll to the right invisibility as a percentage, then in the second bubble, we want it to equal zero. And finally, drag the increase value block inside of the blue check once if. So this means if bird is totally visible, our score will go up. But if bird is invisible because we lost, our score won't go up. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, and cool. So that's the gist of Flappy Bird. Now you can add a cool background or change bird out for a different character using set text. So go ahead, show a friend and see if they can beat your high score. Have fun.